Big Ten Football Media Day is continuing from Chicago. You see James Franklin, head coach of Penn State, signing some autographs and hanging out with the three players that joined him here. Linebacker Cam Brown, cornerback John Reed, and punter Blake Gillikin, who join us now on our set. Good to have the three of you guys here with us. And indeed... Good to be here. Yeah, looking Good sharp. Uh, I, I noticed kind of a matching. There's some coordination here. Is that is that by design? Uh, yeah, we went to the same place, the same tailor, but uh, same, yeah. I said keep it basic for me. All right. Uh, we, we, I mean, you got to wear the navy blue. You got to wear the Penn State yeah, it's blue. It's Penn State, I mean, all right. It's only right, and I mean, we, we changed it up a little bit, you know. I teach its own a little bit. Okay. All right, well, I like it. You guys look good. Appreciate uh, that. Let's talk a little bit about this team. You know, last year, I think you were really close to where you wanted to be, and, you know, you think back over the last couple of years, some close losses in big games, and, and that's kind of been the difference for you guys. How do you turn those close losses into close wins? Well, personally, we got, well, as a team, honestly, we've been focusing on the details, finding all the things that we can do to make it better on the field, off the field, no matter if it's from our strength and conditioning program to just how guys are preparing, how guys are meeting and things like that. So we're trying to find that niche to really what, what's going to make that difference and what's going to get us that extra three, four points on Saturdays. John? Um, yeah, I think definitely that and just focusing on all the small details, you know, on and off the field. Uh, you notice that, you know, even if you're some detail that you may not notice, like the little five yard penalties that we may have in big games, a turnover in a big game, uh, making one small mental error, just, those things just can't happen. And that's just all about your preparation. So just preparing more and more and staying focused on the little things you think may not show up but make a big deal in a, a big games like that. Blake? Yeah, I think it just shows you, it goes to show that we're right there. I think comes down to a couple plays here and there in a couple games. Um, if you make those plays, season goes completely different. So I think we worked with the purpose this off season to try to clean those little details up, and we're looking forward to kind of putting that all on display in the fall. Spent a lot of time around James Franklin here, not nearly as much as you guys, but certainly we've gotten a chance to visit with him, to observe him in practice, and, and it's clear he is a motivational coach and, and he's also a guy who always has a message everything is for a purpose so Blake maybe you can start and, and work your way down but what's kind of the message what's the controlling theme of this year's team yeah it's taking it one game at a time we're focused on Idaho at this point we're not looking forward to any other team on our schedule other than Idaho on August 31st um, that's kind of the the monster we've been we've been going with the past couple of years and it's really worked for us well so looking to continue that this year and then obviously just take the next step anything else stand out there John um, I think just exactly what he said, just focusing now on the moment, not looking ahead at all, just focusing on what we can do right now and maximize the day uh, to make ourselves better. And those days start to build up and they add up. And, you know, you really start to see the difference when the season comes. Cam? Honestly, it's exactly what they're saying. I mean, we're, we've are we been beating ourselves these last games. Those games, those couple points, we're beating ourselves. So we got to make the less mental errors and less mental mistakes. and. Pretty much that's going to get us our points. So that's the best where we're in. we're honing in on those details. Yeah, it's interesting. The For better or for worse, you know, often the quarterback becomes the, the face of the program. You guys don't have Trace McSorley. Is it strange to go to spring practice, for instance, to go to off-season workouts and not <laughs> see Trace out there? Uh, it's a little different. You get used to seeing that guy back yeah. there. You get used to the, that style of play, that command that he had on the team. But with Sean there now, it's no, it's no real drop off or you feel like anything like that. It's just, it's just different. It's his own vibe. He has, he plays his style of football a little bit differently. So, to me. Yeah, I'm a miss Trace, of course, but no, I'm ready for Sean to step up into the shoes. Well, give us some insight there because, you know, Sean has played it sparingly. I mean, we've certainly seen a little bit of Sean Clifford, but, but people don't know him in the way that they know Trace McSorley. So you guys go up against him yeah. defensively. <laughs> What's he like? What, what do we need to know about Sean Clifford? Um, I think he gives you a bit more mobility than you would think. A lot of people see him come in late in games and throw the deep ball and sit in the pocket. But seeing what he can do, uh, being able to sprint for first downs, things like that in spring ball, the command that he has on the offense, and him not making those decisions that you would expect from a young quarterback, those bad decisions, he hasn't done that. He's been making really good decisions and putting some tight, uh, putting the ball in some tight windows that you wouldn't expect. Cam? I can really only I can only really say the same thing. I mean, Sean, he's he's showing improvement day by day, and 
the biggest thing I've been telling people is I'm impressed with the way Sean is taking his leadership. He's he's taking it by the horns. He's doing what he got to do. He's doing extra work. He's I I came back from an internship and I see Sean out at 10 in the morning. He's doing he's throwing the ball and he's coming in for rehab stuff and then he's going right back into the film room and then we have workouts later, like team workouts. So he's doing a lot outside of what he needs to do and he's making it happen. What was your internship? I was at my high school. I was with my strength and conditioning coach there. I'm a kinesiology. Ooh, I'm a kinesiology major. So I was pretty much studied the human body movement. I was doing personal training stuff. So we worked with younger kids uh, that are in classes and are learning how to take care of their body, learning the, the benefits of physical fitness. And then we go in the afternoon, we're training with the sports teams, the lacrosse team who won the national championship. And then we're going in the, even later in the evening, that's when you train with the college and the potential NFL athletes. And so I got a, a good diversity of all of it right there. What was the most rewarding part of that? Honestly, I we sat down. It was a group of the three guys that in my class that went and played at other schools. We sat down with the, uh, the football team, and we talked to them for probably, I think it was three or four hours, just talking about life and how you want, if you want to get to where we are, what you got to do, and the things to expect on that path. And we were talking to the parents and things. I felt like when the parents came up to us after and told us that they appreciated this and this was really, like, they were genuine about it, and it, that, that hit home for me. Honestly. John, I know you're a data sciences major. You had an amazing internship opportunity at Intel a while yeah. back. <clears throat> what did you glean from that? Um, you know, I definitely I learned a lot. Uh, just being able to work in that corporate type of environment was something I wasn't used to, uh, but it definitely helped. Um, I also did an internship this summer. I was at Blizzard. So after doing an internship before at Intel, it was a lot easier now uh, transitioning into that environment. Um, been working at a gaming industry, a gaming company was was a really good experience. You know, you actually see people at during lunch playing the game and everything like that. And then during the day, learning a lot in the software engineering field. Um, I learned a lot, so it was a good experience. Is that ultimately the the area that interests you the most in computers? Uh, the gaming. Yeah, the the gaming. But then I just I just like making like fun stuff, like stuff that I find interesting. I like being able to build it. That's pretty much what got me into it. I like you know I like games a lot. I want to know how they worked, and then that's what kind of put me on that path. You know, it's interesting, Blake. We we were talking a little bit about leadership, and and Cam mentioned Sean Clifford and and being a leader. You're a team captain. You're a returning captain on this team. How do you lead? Yeah, I think I started out leading by example. I think I've really tried to mature and work on my vocal leadership skills during the off season. I think I call myself a well, well-rounded leader at this point. Um, obviously, being a specialist, specialists don't always get the respect on the team that other players will get. I really worked hard in workouts when I was younger to kind of gain that respect and then um, establish myself as a, as a player that helps this team win football games. Um, so that's probably how I'd say I help lead this team. You know, you struggled a little bit with consistency. How do you become – no one would dispute the high-end potential that you have as a punter. How do you become the most consistent punter you can be? Yeah, sure, just getting back to, to what I do best, which is prepare. Um, I think practice is, is the best way to do that. I think um, going in the last season, I didn't really approach the season how I wanted to. I got back to doing that this season, so really looking forward to fall camp and putting it all together during the season. John, you're a fifth-year player. We know you battled some injuries. What's your mindset as you head into your final year? Um, I'm just really excited. I'm ready to have fun. You know, I got to have a full off season. I was totally dedicated to football. You know, not necessarily worried about rehabbing. Like, I still obviously do my stretching and make sure I'm taking care of my body, but it was totally dedicated to just working cornerback and straight football, and that's what I love doing, Working, worrying about my speed, my technique, and that was my entire focus, and I had to worry about anything else. So I'm really excited for the season. We've been talking a lot about leadership, and that's a huge part of any off season, of course, with a football team is establishing those leaders. Blake was discussing his role. Coach Franklin has really praised you as a leader. What's your leadership style? Uh, honestly, it's a little bit of everything. I feel like I do well with doing leading by example. I feel like that's how it started. I feel like since my freshman year, I always worked and worked, and I feel like the coaches understood that and respected it. But I feel like at the same time, I'm, I'm coming into this role more publicly, so I have, I'm becoming more vocal. I'm t- telling what the guys what to do and just trying to be a mentor for a lot of the younger guys because it's a little different. you got a transitioning period for everybody. It's hard for some guys, and I feel like for me to, to be able to, to go to a guy that they can joke around with and play with in the locker room, but at the same time, if you need something serious on the side or even if you just need a ride somewhere, you can come to me and look out for me that's kind of my style you mentioned the young guys and that's going to be a theme with this team no doubt there is a lot of youth it is very talented youth 
but it is youth. And I'd say it's particularly on the offensive side, not as much at the side of the ball that, that you two play on. But I want to start with you, Blake, and, and I want each one of you to just give me a sense of young guys who could emerge, who maybe fans don't know as much about or or they've heard the recruiting hype, but, but they haven't seen him play, and you have. Yeah, I think a, a big area for us is going to be wide receiver this year. Um, obviously, I have K.J. Hamley returning, one of the – probably the top – a receiver in the Big Ten, um, in our opinion, probably. And uh, there's some guys in that room that are really going to step up this year. Um, added a couple guys from the, the graduate transfer market um, and also guys that, that have been developing um, as red shirts and, and redshirt freshmen and so on. So really excited to see, see what they're going to do this year um, for our football team. What about on the defensive side, John? Um, we have a lot of corners. We're really deep at corner. Um, you have uh, Tariq on the opposite side, and uh, me, that's still there. You have Donovan, who's coming in. He's going to be really, really good. He's super fast. Uh, Duke can run 4-3 on a bad day. Um, you got uh, Keaton Ellis. Um, we have Marquise coming in, who's also a freshman. These like all young guys, Trent, DJ. All the guys are, you know, they've worked super hard this summer. They're people who I can literally text them 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, like, hey, yo, I'm bored. I'm about to go to Haluba. What you doing? Like, all right, come on, we about to go there, and then they'll do footwork with me. Like, just the, the talent and the speed. Like, they're young, and I think even on the offensive side of the ball, they're young, but they work so hard, and with the athleticism that they have, they're able to make up for some of the mistakes that they make. How about young Brandon Smith, Lance Dixon, some of these guys that are that are names that have been out there? Give Penn State fans a, a sense of what to expect from those guys. Well, I'll tell you, Brandon came in. Uh, I was looked at him. I was like. This kid's bigger than me already. He's, <laughs> he came in, I think he's, he's weighing, I think he's solid, probably about 235, 240 now. And he's big. He had a nice broad jump. He's testing well. He's doing everything well. So Brandon looks good. Brandon looks really good. He looks like he'll be he'll be a first-round pick in the next few years. Just give him a couple years of developing things. But Lance, Lance is one of the guys, he's, he has that natural speed, so he can play at the speed of the college level. But he's just getting the, he's getting to know it a little bit more. And you've seen him grow over spring ball tremendously. So those guys are getting back into their groove, and you can see them. They're getting their confidence up a little bit each week by week. Well, Cam Brown, John Reed, Blake Gillikin, thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.